Hey guys, so today at Nerd and Geek Culture by Rap, we're going to be discussing my tips and tricks to collecting video games in 2018. So if you're just getting started out, this will be for you. Uh, the tips I'll be discussing will also work for if you're just going to be a gamer. So this is going to be sort of my tips and tricks based on I've been in this for, I started collecting roughly three years ago. In that time, I made a lot of mistakes. So the tips and tricks are going to be based on what I've learned from those mistakes. Since this is my first video, I am going to tell you a little bit about who I am. So my name is Robert Cullen. I go by the handle Rab2020 online, as it says in my description. Uh, you can find me on Facebook under Robert John Cullen. John is my middle name. As I say in my description, I'm a jack of all trades when it comes to nerd and geek stuff. I, uh, I'm an expert on anything, so don't take anything I talk about to absolute certainty without doing your own research, obviously. Uh, I collect comics uh, back when I was younger. I don't really collect so much anymore. I do keep up to date fairly up what's going on in the comic universes, as well as I do watch the movies, TV shows, all that stuff. So the world of comics is definitely within my realm of fandom. Video games, um, other associated nerd and geek culture stuff, such as anime, Harry Potter stuff, Star Wars, I'm not as big a fan of Star Trek, but I might mention the newer movies are cool. So yeah, that's kind of like what I'm going to be talking about overall on this channel. But back to what this video is about, it's going to be about my tips and tricks to getting yourself started with video game collecting in 2018. With that being said, let's get right into the video and we'll see you there. Tip number one. Now this tip won't necessarily apply to the just straight gamers. Figuring out the answer to this one is very easy for you. But to someone who's really just wanting to dive right into the collecting aspect, you really need to stop. Take a step back and think about your why, your reason, what it is that you really want to collect. Are you going to collect a specific like console brand? Like, are you going to collect Nintendo, Sony, Sega stuff? Even older, go with Atari, Coleco, or are you going to collect everything? This tip is coming based on my mistakes, which was I didn't even think about that. I literally just jumped right in. I had money to burn. I had like over you know, close to $2,000 to spend that I should have better spent on debt and bills and whatever else. But I just, boop, let's collect and literally just bought everything I saw. And then the money ran out and I'm like, what now? I don't have any complete sets. I don't have anything. I just have a random assortment of everything. So what I recommend to you is to just take a step back, think about what it is you want to collect. Maybe you want to collect Zelda stuff, collect Final Fantasy, just Super Mario stuff. Whatever it is, take a step back, think about it, and decide first. Step number two. Once you've picked what it is that you want to collect, before you start buying everything that you see, because a lot of what you see is not going to be fairly priced, what you really need to do is reach out social networking. Go on Facebook, join some video game groups, reach out to all your friends and family that might know people who have video games they want to get rid of for cheap prices or help you out. That is really the best way to start a collection. Find fair priced resellers. Now, obviously, before you buy off anyone, ask around. Get some feedback. There's a lot of scammers out there, so you do have to be careful. You don't want to just throw your money at someone. Make sure you talk to the admins of any Facebook groups you're buying through. See if they have a feedback page, or if they don't, if they know someone that they should be reaching out to to get the proper feedback before you throw someone your money. That's pretty much the end of tip number two. Just reach out to people, let them know you're collecting that you want to buy games at a fair price, just see who reaches out back to you. Tip number three. Be knowledgeable about the stuff that you're buying. Unfortunately, we live now in an age in 2018 where the retro collecting market has boomed. There are resellers everywhere. And unfortunately, not all of those resellers are fair, legitimate people. 
there's a lot of reproduction product coming out of Japan, China. Uh, there's a lot of companies there operating in a gray area where they are making third party product that looks very real to someone who doesn't necessarily know what they're looking for. So you may go on eBay and be like, oh, that's a really great price Conkers. I'm going to snag that. And you got get it for 60 bucks. And you're like, yay, awesome. Then you get it in the mail. And it's not so awesome because you take a closer look at the label and you're like, whoa, that E doesn't look like it should. So you look up on Google Images for the cart label and you see that the E is actually supposed to be a bit thicker. It's supposed to be maybe tilted a little bit differently on the age restriction label. So you just really have to be careful when you're looking for games online and specifically in a situation where you can't actually see the physical product you are buying before it gets to you. That's also very important when you are buying from a store or uh, uh, swaps are hard. You're not going to find a lot of resale tables that are like, yeah, sure, I'll pop this cart open in front of you. That's where you have to hopefully just take the fact that, especially if they're a store, that they're not going to screw you because you could complain, go to their store and ask for your money back. If it's a, a random reseller with no store name, no presence online, then that's where you have to be a little bit more concerned if they're not willing to show you something. When you're buying something physical in person, I highly recommend having your own tools on you, but definitely if they're asking for value on something and it doesn't look right, check it. Don't second guess it or you could get screwed. That is the end of this tip. Tip number four. Know how and what to look for when buying online. I'm going to keep this tip really short because I'm going to do a bit of a second video that's going to be going into much more detail on this, but really there's, I'm just going to mention the sites that you should be looking for. So the main buying sites for buying online uh, without having to go to like specific online stores would be um, eBay, Amazon, Kijiji. You can buy online at like uh, Walmart, the source online, like the typical Best Buy, uh, GameStop if you're in the States, uh, EB Games if you're in Canada. I'm not really sure what's in the Europe area for the stores, I apologize, or other parts of the world. Obviously you can go through the Facebook groups and whatnot uh, for buy and sell, trade, all that kind of stuff. And then there's also the ways to find whether or not you're paying fair prices. And so the, the main sites for that that I know of personally, I'm sure there's more, but the ones that I prefer to use, so I think these are my tips and tricks, are pricecharting.com. There's a nice whole whack load of features on there that I'll make a detailed video on that and show you how to use them and everything like that. And there's also Game Value Now. Now, Game Value Now has been out of date since last Christmas, December of 2017. They had had their API poll restricted, but that has now just changed. They, I've been in communication with them. They sent me an email a couple days ago saying that that has now been resolved. He's just on vacation. The owner, when he gets back, he's gonna make sure everything gets back going. Updates are gonna be done and the site will get back rolling again. So if you check out both sites and you prefer the layout of Game Value Now, personally, uh, my opinion is that it's a little bit more user-friendly. Price charting has a few more features currently uh, that Game Value Now may catch up to but Game Value now has a much better layout in my opinion. Now, that being said, you can use both. Uh, I do recommend using both, comparing, making sure that the sites are kind of on par with each other because they are supposed to be pulling from the same location. eBay sold listings. That's where you get your game values online from. The sold listings on eBay and occasionally uh, price trading does factor in some various other marketplaces to my knowledge. I don't know how much of an actual bearing that has on the overall price. It's all scientific computer algorithms that I don't personally understand. So now that being said, that's the end of that tip and we're gonna move into the next one. Tip number five. Tip number five is completely optional in the sense of the size of your wallet and your desire to be specific. The, the actual quote for this tip is, Everyone goes right, you go left. In the gaming industry right now, the retro gaming industry, overall, I mean, new gen, there's a constant competition going on between Nintendo, Sony, and Xbox. That won't change. But when it comes to the retro market, Nintendo currently has the largest following. 
so uh, it's going to take the largest pull on your wallet. That's just something you're going to have to swallow if you decide you want to collect Nintendo. When it comes to my first tip, when I'm saying take a step back, stop and decide what you want. If you decide you want Nintendo, well, sorry, it's the most expensive and until the market takes a turn, but that's not going to change. So if you want to consider your wallet before desire, don't choose Nintendo to Sega or Sony, uh, PS2 is still pretty cheap, PS3 is exceptionally cheap right now because everyone's after the PS4, Xbox Original is still pretty cheap, Xbox 360 is dirt cheap right now. So there's lots of cheap options for if you want to pick up games at what would have been the Nintendo yard sale prices back in the day, you know, two bucks, five bucks, whatever. That's hard to find for Nintendo unless you're buying sports garbage. Really. That's just up to doing your research. I'm not going to go big into what's currently trending right now. Obviously, Nintendo is the highest. Currently, I collect Nintendo. So I chose the screw my wallet. Uh, that was the mistake. I, I shouldn't have done that, but I made, the, I made the commitment. I've got a lot now. So what am I going to do? Am I going to sell it all and start over? I guess I could, but I don't know. I'm surviving. But yeah, really just think about what you want to do. If you want to do some research as to what's currently trending in the retro market value wise, what's going down, what's going up, if you are in the financial part of it, then yeah, you really want to think about it. So that's the end of that tip. Tip number six. All right guys, so again, this tip is completely optional in the sense that it is based on your wallet. It's the option to buy lots in bulk and then sell the doubles. So say you're collecting for Nintendo and you've got 150 of the games out of the 300 you want, or 296, 7, 6, I've seen different lists that you want. Uh, so what you're doing is now instead of buying them one by one, you're buying lots of 20 or 30 games. So you're taking out the, the 10 or the 12 or the 15 that came in that lot that you need, and what you're doing is you're going and reselling the other 15 to recoup some, most all, depending on the games you're reselling, of what you bought, paid for that original lot. So sometimes, depending on whether you have the money to invest at the time, that can be the smartest way to collect. Because sometimes you can be in the long run, collecting for free by the time you flip the stuff you don't need. Like I said, that's optional. You have to have the money to invest in the original lots, but in the long run of it, it can be the most beneficial. And when you do go to resell your collection, you're technically making all profit because you didn't spend anything on the majority of it. You were able to recoup most of what you were spending along the way. That is the end of that tip. I do highly recommend that tip for those that can afford it. I personally can't. At some point, uh, if you do have any interest in understanding why my collection is so large, as I will do a video at some point to show you the entirety of my video game collection. Right now you can just sort of see behind me all the Disney Infinity that are sealed on my wall there. Those two cabinets are completely full of Sony games, PlayStation 2 and 3. The camera itself right now is sitting inside a cabinet that is full of Nintendo stuff, Zelda, some Wii U, uh, GameCube in this next cabinet, like there's a large collection in my room. You're welcome to message me on any of my social networking sites. I'm happy to talk anytime about video games. I love it. I'll even help you find your values. I don't mind going on the sites for you until you learn how to do it yourself. Uh, reach out to me. I'm here. That's tip number seven. So tip number seven, again, is a completely optional tip. I don't personally do it, but if you're in a situation where funding is an issue, especially if you're really only wanting to game, this is actually a perfect option for the price. You can buy game imports. You can buy Super Famicom and Nintendo Famicom online from eBay far cheaper than you can buy the NES or SNES counterparts. Now, yes, they are in their original language. I believe there are quite a few ways you can change that. 
if you're just a gamer, there are high quality repros that are cheaper than some of the big name games. Most companies don't repro the cheap games because it's not worth it to them. You just have to make sure you're watching where you get the repro from because a lot of them don't have proper save states, they don't load properly, they don't function properly, so you're literally just buying a piece of plastic garbage. But you can buy repros if you're looking for an option that is not as expensive. But the imports, that, that is a really good option because they do look nice in the collection. I did have some Super Famicom at one point, I did sell them, but I, I did like how they looked. I didn't have a system they worked in at the time. I was planning to get one, but then I changed my mind. Like I said, I was all over the place when I first started collecting, so. But yeah, they're a great option for those that really just want a cheaper option than the North American versions of the games. You do have to watch for the region locking. Like for example, Nintendo DS, you can buy a game from anywhere in the world and it will work on your North American Nintendo DS system. But they added region locking to the 3DS and other systems of that uh, generation. So you can't buy a 3DS game from Japan and play it on your North American 3DS, it will not work. So you just gotta make sure if you're uh, strictly gaming and you're doing new gen gaming and you wanna choose imports, you watch what you're buying. So that is the end of the import step. Tip number eight. So this tip does relate directly back to the tip number two, I believe it was, where I talked about networking. This isn't social networking, this is physical networking. When it comes to getting to know your community of resellers, that is very important because if they know you and like you, they're more likely willing to give you a good deal, especially when you're buying bulk. You're better likely to get a good discount on what you are buying. And the best way to get to know all your local resellers is to go to all your local video game conventions. Not only do you get to know everyone, but they're a lot of fun. The last one I was at was the Barry Game Convention. Sorry, Barry Game Exchange. BGE is what it's called. There was over a hundred tables there. Not over a hundred vendors. Like my one friend Landon had up to, he had seven or eight tables. Uh, one entire wall was just completely pop figures. Then he had, the other side was all Nintendo stuff. For the most part, he had a little bit of Sega, a little bit of Sony. But like I said, Nintendo's really in right now, and this guy knows how to buy the large lot, so you can make him bank. The swaps are a lot of fun, and you get to know everyone, so that's the best way to get your games for cheap. There's always huge Comic Cons, conventions, swaps. I recommend getting there to everyone that you can. Get to know your collectors. That's the best way to build your collection without having to waste money online with stupid prices. So that's the end of this tip. Tip number nine. This one also relates back to the networking tip of number two. Get to know your store owners locally if you have store owners locally. I know some of you live in remote areas of whatever country you're in. You may not have any local stores and that may not be an option, but that's also another good way to build your collection for cheap. Nice short tip. Not really much else I can say about that. Some stores are fairly priced, some are not. That's where you can make sure that you are knowing your stuff with your pricing. Again, relating back to price charting and game value now, I'll explain in the video that there are apps to each of those that you can have in your phone. They work offline to an extent. Most of us have mobile data, data these days anyways, and we only really don't want to watch videos with it because that's what puts us over our limit. Looking up a simple video game online will only take a few kilobytes of data, so it's worth doing the time to make sure you're not wasting your money on an overpriced game. And we have one last and final tip for you. Tip number 10. It's gonna be a little bit of a combination of things. Um, really what it works down to is patience and having fun while you do it. You'll find as you grow your collection, space will become an issue. You'll see, I only rent a bedroom where I am, so that's a huge issue for me. I have video games everywhere. Not that I mind, I love them, but at the same time, I don't have room for anything else. Until I get my own place, that's what it's kind of like for me, but. So make sure you worry about your space and organizing how you're gonna store your games because you want to keep them in good condition, etc. and so on. So just be patient, have fun with it, make sure you're getting time to play the games that you're buying because otherwise it might feel like you're wasting your money and you don't wanna do that. And that's pretty much all I got for you today, guys. So that's my tips and tricks to getting started retro collecting in 2018. I mean, it's not much different than any other year. Nintendo's still going up in price. 
the others are starting to creep up depending on what you're looking at so that's it guys that's it for me today this is rab from nerd and geek culture and we will be back soon So I hope you enjoyed today's video with my first one. Here's a little bit more of my other side of my room's collection. All the Nintendo stuff I was referring to, that's the shelf that I had my camera on for the entirety of the video. So yeah, also, if you uh, are already a collector and you watched this far in the video, make sure you do get in touch with me. Uh, leave a comment down at the bottom, let me know what you collect, whether it's Nintendo, Sony, uh, Sega, Xbox, whatever it is, let me know. We can reach up together on Facebook, we can uh, yeah, send me some pictures of your collection, I can feature them on my uh, Twitter, on my Instagram. And if you like videos about all things Nerd and Geek, don't forget to subscribe by hitting the button down there and make sure to ding the bell so you're one of the first to get notified when a new video drops.